call this the super flu. More people are going to the hospital and the emergency room because of a strain of the flu called H3N2. And you got to keep this in mind, this virus can be more contagious and the regular symptoms that you, like, you have, like fever, cough, body aches and fatigue, will feel even worse. Yeah, this strain is also known as a subclade K variant. Dr. Nicholas Moore joins us now via Zoom. Thank you, doctor, so much for taking this time uh, to uh, enlighten us on this. What exactly is a subclade K variant? How is it different from uh, other flu strains? Well, thank you. Um, that's a really great question. Just keep in mind, it is still influenza A virus, and there's a lot of different um, types of influenza A. Commonly, we see H1N1 or H3N2. And flus, viruses, as they're replicating, kind of acquire and develop mutations. Um, and that is really how this particular variant or subclade clay came into existence. So, doctor, some people are looking at this flu as feeling much different than some of the flus that we've had in the past. Just on your end, are, are you seeing even more severe symptoms and complications compared to some past flu seasons? So we aren't seeing um, any differences in terms of severe symptoms or complications yet. Um, we, what we have been seeing, though, are more cases of influenza activity that have peaked um, more sooner in, our, in the typical respiratory season than normal. Typically, we see cases peaking in late January, early February, but we're seeing a lot more heightened influenza activity now. You know, Brett and I were just talking about this. We've seen this go through the newsroom, a coworker. Uh, had symptoms for, for several weeks. So what should people watch for that may signal that this is a more serious case? Um, you know, some of the symptoms of se a more severe influenza or um, uh, in which complications can arise, if you have symptoms that persist for more than five days, such as uh, cough, uh, cough or worsening cough, or maybe a fever that um, defervest or um, went away and has come back, uh, certainly, if patients start to see or experience shortness of breath, chest pain, uh, more persistent or unusual headaches or changes in mental status, those can all be signs of more um, severe influenza infection. And, Doc, you said something that really jumped out at me. You said that the typical flu usually peaks in the month of January, but we're seeing it right now. So what is this going to mean for the rest of the flu season? Are we going to be experiencing a much longer flu season than usual? Um, there's no, uh, it's possible that we'll see a more prolonged influenza season. Um, we'll just have to kind of wait and see how it unfolds. But we do look to see what happens in the southern hemisphere. Um, and they are still, have still been reporting um, cases of influenza um, outside of their typical respiratory season. You know, there's a lot of folks that are very diligent about uh, trying to protect themselves from uh, exposure. But are there any practical steps you would recommend right now uh, for children, for families, for for older or infirm patients uh, uh, to reduce their risk of exposure? Absolutely. And it's the same things that your physician and other public health experts will recommend all the time. And I think it's really critical to do that, especially now around the holidays when we're doing lots of gatherings. So just always remember to wash your hands very frequently with soap and water or with an alcohol-based um, gel or hand sanitizer. And try to minimize touching your eyes, face, and nose as much as possible because that's the primary way that which uh, of which we get influenza. Um, if you're going out into really crowded or overcrowded spaces, you can wear um, a, a cloth or mask to help protect yourself. Um, and then, of course, if you do develop symptoms of uh, respiratory infection or influenza-like illness, stay home from work or school if you're sick. Just had another thing. Uh, is COVID complicated things with this new strain because even during COVID, it was still at that time where we really didn't know if it was the traditional flu or if, if it was COVID. Is, it, is this sort of complicating everything since COVID is certainly out there still? You know, we're just in peak respiratory season right now. So um, influenza, COVID, RSV, and other um, viral causes of upper respiratory disease are all circulating. And really, you won't know unless you're tested um, uh, by, uh, by your physician um, or if you do an over-the-counter or point-of-care test at home that can test for influenza or COVID. Um, so it's really... if. Um, yeah, it's really hard to know the difference sometimes. Just and, and we were just talking about this before we came back from break, but it is not too late uh, to get uh, the uh, flu shot, is it? No, it's never too late to get the flu shot. All right, Dr. Moore, thank you so much for joining us and giving us that insight just to how everybody can protect themselves. Because, uh, yeah, it's certainly going around, just we were talking about in our newsroom. So just everyone be safe out there.